Oh my god, you guys, the spring cleaning project that has taken me weeks to do is finally done, and it is so satisfying. You know what, you know the kind of satisfaction I'm talking about? You know when you've been stuck on an airplane at 35,000 feet, and the plane finally comes down, and those, those that, all that goddamn pressure in your ears just finally pops? That kind of satisfaction. Or you know the kind of satisfaction when you get up in the morning, and your neck's all cranked up, and you just kind of turn your neck just a little bit, and just pop, 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 pop. That kind of satisfaction. You know what I'm talking about, guys. You know when you've been at the movie theater and you regretfully got the giant 52-ounce liter of soda and you've been drinking that for a two-and-a-half-hour movie and you got to pee so bad and you're just waiting for the goddamn movie to end because you don't want to miss the climax and then you rush out and you hit the urinal and it's like a deluge of relief. That kind of satisfaction. Oh, man, I am so glad that's done. Next, Plastic Planet. With your host, it's Nick Nick. Hey, welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I am your host, Nick Knack. It is 1 a.m. Sunday morning, and my whole family is asleep, and the house is very peaceful right now. The only sound I hear is the sound of the dishwasher going upstairs in the kitchen, and that's a good thing, because right now I'm going to guys show you guys what I've been working on for the past three freaking weeks. It's, it's hilarious to me, because when I started this project, I thought I'd do it in three days. Well... No, it has taken me three whole weeks to get this done, but I gotta tell you, I am super, super pleased with the results. I have a renewed plastic planet. The chaos is gone. Order has been restored, and it is looking fantastic in here. My main room that I'm sitting in right now has been completely transformed. I'm feeling wonderful about it. It feels like a space that I can work in for where I edit my videos, a place where I can relax and watch television, watch baseball games. Um, you know, later in the fall it'll be football games, but but a place where I can just totally chill out and relax. I'm not overwhelmed with with too much action figure awesomeness because you know what? Sometimes too much of a good thing isn't really a good thing. So I am pleased as punch with the results of how this room turned out, and I'm also pleased as punch with how the downstairs archive room also turned out. Um, I've been doing some filming. As you know, if you've been watching my videos the last couple weeks, I've been doing a lot of my filming down there. Well, I put some finishing touches on it in the last few days, and it is looking absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do for you guys this morning, and I'm probably going to do this in, in two parts here. Um, one, I'm going to film right now when it's when it's dark outside because I think it looks a little better um, at nighttime. I'm Gonna film I'm gonna give you guys a full tour of my archive room as it stands right now it's looking absolutely fantastic down there and then probably um, later on in the day when it's daylight I'm gonna show you guys the upstairs room or the plastic planet as I like to call it so it's gonna be kind of a two-part thing but I'm gonna do it all for you guys in this one video it's gonna be completely awesome so all right so let's just get to this right now let's go downstairs right now and let's I'm gonna just want to show you off how completely awesome it is all right let's go <laughs> Alrighty, so I am standing in this stairway heading down into my archive room right now. And to my, my regular viewers, I hope this doesn't seem too redundant, guys. But I, I promise you, I've added a few special things down here. I think it's looking really fantastic, and, and I hope you enjoy checking it out with me one more time. Um, you know, one thing I, I just really love about, you know, YouTube and, and the Internet in general is being able to check out other people's collections and to really get a feel for how they manipulate their collectibles, utilize their shelf space, and, and really, you know, bring life to their collections because you know in the in the end we're all just curators of our own museum aren't we guys so as a curator of the plastic planet I just want to take this opportunity to show off yet again my collection and hopefully hopefully you guys are hopefully you guys enjoy this this journey down into the archive room and then of course into the plastic planet itself Alrighty, so I have killed some of the lights as we're heading down into the archive room and as you can see I have installed a running track of LED blue rope lights. Now I did some rope light installation on, my, on about two videos ago um, 
over uh, over towards my uh, Star Wars, my modern Star Wars uh, collection, and I wasn't real thrilled with the results. It was okay, but I thought I'd give it another go on the ceiling. Cause I just thought, you know, if you're gonna put rope light somewhere, you gotta put it on the ceiling. And God, it looks really, really good. I am really digging it. It just, I, I went with the. Uh, I went with the with the blue because I just kind of wanted to kind of make it look like a Pac-Man maze, and you know, I dig it. I think it looks really fantastic. The only thing that's missing down here is an Olympia beer sign, and this basement slash archive room would look amazing. Alrighty, so I'm just going to take you guys up and down some of this, this new shelving I've installed and show you what I've placed on it and how I've placed it. And, you know, to some of you guys, uh, some of these items will seem kind of redundant to my really long time viewers, to my to my newer subscribers and newer viewers. Hopefully this is, this is kind of new. And yes, you have standing in front of you a Fisher Price circus train from the 1970s. Um, I, I did a full kind of review on this um, several transmissions ago. It was actually one of my earlier vi earliest videos. Um, I can't remember which transmission it was. It was sort of a bonus time deal, and I did a short review on it. But this is something that was f a unique item that I remember from my childhood that I did happen to find at a antique mall um, right here in North Glen, Colorado. And I got to tell you, it just was it was complete, and I just had to pick it up. Um, absolutely awesome. I've got a number of other kind of um, really, really uh, items that are indicative of my very, very early childhood, um, including some uh, wind-up Tomy um, robots that you see in the intro to the to the to Knickknacks Plastic Planet. I've got my old Garfield right there. Uh, that's actually from my childhood. So I mean, this is sort of my this is sort of indicative of, of my very early childhood uh, love for toys. Um, obviously, Fisher Price Little People. I'm sure everybody, you know. Um, almost everyone played with these at one point or another in their in their early childhood, and this this particular set was very very dear to me. Um, obviously, this isn't the one from my childhood, as I said, as I as I did get this just a few months ago at a, at a uh, at like I said an antique mall here locally. But still, I just had to put that somewhere kind of special because I mean, you know what? Hey, I mean, a big reason why that you know we 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 are into this hobby is because of our just refusal our absolute refusal to give in to full adulthood and this is just so sim symbolic of that for me so anyway so that is that and moving down the shelf i've got uh my vintage uh collection uh millennium falcon from i think 2004 right there and then of course i've got my micro world best spin play set which i showed off in the last video if you want to check out a full this 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 in full go back and check that out in my last video but i do dig this stuff i really do dig the micro world uh play sets i have two of them um this and then the hoth one which i'll show you in just a moment um and i also showed that off in my last video as well but i really do dig these um you know they're just they're just special to me um I, Part of this is from my childhood, part of it I, I picked up as an adult, um, so it is a mishmash, but nevertheless, just completely awesome. And then on the following shelf, I have always kind of wanted to do this. I never really thought to do it, but this is my Royal Starship from 1999. And I have never actually displayed it open with action figures in it. And I've seen some other collector collectors do that on YouTube. And I kind of thought, well, maybe it was time I did that myself. I've had this piece hanging up down here for years. And in my old room, I either had it in storage or hanging up there as well. So I just thought it was time to kind of open it up, put some episode one figures in it, and really enjoy it. Um, I did clean it up this evening as well. Um, I, I just kind of wiped it down, got the dust off, and then I and then I shined it up using some floor wax. Um, and I think I got it pretty shiny. I mean, there's some scuff marks and stuff on it. It's 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 got some display wear, that's for sure. But still, I do dig this piece a lot. Um, you know, before before the the um, the large scale legendary Millennium Falcon that came out, uh, one I have upstairs. You know what the one I'm talking about, guys? The giant Millennium Falcon, not the one I just showed you, but the really big one. But before that came out, this was really, in my opinion, the gold standards of play sets for Star Wars of any era. And so and it still holds up to a certain degree today. The way that sh the way the the ship kind of folds out, and you you got all kinds of you know you got all kinds of activities going on here you've got the you've got the the leaking hyperdrive here and you got the, the the droid elevator and then of course the main cockpit and and then of course the throne room here 
and then you can open this up and there's a if I can do it without making a total mess and there's an escape pod or a I don't know like a royal shuttle in there so I mean you know really cool play set um, just lots of playability here for if you were a kid of the 90s you might you might have played with this perhaps if you're a little younger than me obviously I bought it as a collectible but maybe you own this as a toy so you know just I don't know this was kind of a this was kind of a win for me um, yeah I just I really wanted to get it cleaned up and get it displayed Alrighty, and then on the last shelf down here, in that same kind of, uh, kind of, kind of going off that same kind of theme, I've got my 1995 Power of the Force 2 Millennium Falcon display with the back end all opened up, and I've got some, some older figures in there, um, not, not necessarily Power of the Force 2 figures, although that C-3PO is, but the Chewbacca, I think, was a Power of the Jedi figure, as well as the Obi-Wan, uh, that was a Power of the Jedi figure, and then that Luke actually came with the 2005, I believe, um, early bird um, nostalgia kit they did, where they actually sold the early bird kits again, and you had to send away for the figures that you got in like six to eight weeks or whatever. So he was part of that set, and you know, just sort of a sort of a nostalgia gimmick uh, with the release of Revenge of the Sith, but still fun. So I mean, that's nothing to really see there, but that's kind of fun too. Just kind of kind of wanted to play on that same theme and kind of open up some of these ships and kind of display them as play sets as opposed to just ships. You know, really fun stuff. Alrighty, so this shelving unit is kind of as we walk down into the into the archive room. Now I'm going to kind of start moving into the room itself and show you guys off a few more of my shelving units and some other things that I've, I've recently done. So, yeah. So right now, as you can see right here, I have my full DC collectible shelf, which is, you know, probably, you know, 85% Superman because, you know, Superman's my dude. Uh, he's my been my all-time favorite superhero since I was a kid. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I was obviously heavily influenced by Superman the movie and Superman 2 as a child. Christopher Reeve will always be the ultimate superhero for me, the ultimate version of Superman, although I, I don't mind uh, Henry Carvel as well. He's done a pretty bang-up job, um, in my opinion. But anyway, so I've got some 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 items here. Like I said, like I kind of showed this off in my last video as well. So this is this may be kind of redundant, but so I won't spend too much time here. But I've got some of my superpower figures out here. Um, these little people that I've collected recently. Um, those are obviously you know a new little people that are supposed to be sort of a nostalgic retro. Um, God, I gotta tell you, you know, if I would have had these as a little kid, that would have just my head would have it just exploded. I can actually remember putting black electrical tape. On, on little people pretending they were Superman. So to actually have a little a little person super a little people Superman would have been just amazing. So anyway, that's really cool. Dig that. And then down here I've got my Hot Toys, uh, uh, Batman versus Superman, Superman right there. Uh, my Man of Steel, um, uh, General Zod back there. The Sideshow Collectibles, um, Superman they came out with just a few years ago. Then of course the DC Films Man of Steel uh, Superman right there with his with his heat vision which is really kind of cool. I did a review on him several transmissions ago as well. And then of course my uh, multiverse uh, uh, Batman. I think that's from Batman vs Superman. I've got my Doctor Fate with a reproduction cape on him. And and then of course down here, hopefully it's not too dark. I've got my uh, my obviously my Superman vs Doomsday set that I did a full review on several transmissions ago as well. You can check that one out. Uh, I've got my Christopher Reeve Superman, the NECA version, and some other just random uh, DC uh, DC Direct figures and whatnot. And then, of course, I've got my uh, two superpowers, uh, Lex Luthor and Darkseid down there. So that's this shelf. Really fun, really cool, um, really kind of dig it. Um, yeah, that's, that's just awesome. All right, and then coming down this way, I've got some signs hung up down here. Just you know, just slap some scotch tape and on some on on that uh, on that support beam and, and and hung up some of those metal signs. They seem to be hanging up there. Really nice. Kind of dig that. Um, got a nice uh, Batman versus Superman poster there. And then of course, hidden down in this corner is my uh, McFarlane Conan the Barbarian as he takes on that giant gorilla guy. Uh, really cool. Got a nice little little fake plant down there too just give it a little give it a little uh give it a little natural effect with some bricks you know anything you can do just to kind of spice things up and make make a decent diorama i'm just i'm all aboard with that so that's really really cool of course coming over here got another shelf just now we're starting to get into my transformers got my uh hard hero megatron and starscream there with my old f h e vhs single episode cassettes of of the original transformers 
I um, mean, Optimus Prime bobblehead, and then of course I've got Hoist and Grapple over here. I think those are actually reissues from Hasbro from several years back, but still really fun. And this is, we head up this shelf, what do we have here? Yep, it's, an, it's a 10 gallon fish tank. Yeah, I had to actually set up another fish tank, and this is totally 100% my fault. But, I bought this, this cichlid here. And I can't remember what kind of cichlid he is. If you know, if you're a fish tank person and you know what kind of cichlid this is, go ahead and leave me a note in the comments section. I forget his, his official name. But at the pet store, they said he was a community fish, and I thought he would be just fine for my uh, large fish tank because I've got mostly speedy fish in there, including some large tinfoil barbs. Well, this guy is such a motherfucker. Let me tell you, I, he almost, I mean, he was going after my tinfoils, and I thought he was going to kill him, honestly. So, I had to get him out of there, and I happened to have a 10-gallon tank, which I bought a new filter for and, and replaced the heater for, and actually, he's doing really fantastic in there. I'm um, not sure how long he'll live in there. Obviously, he's probably going to outgrow this tank, so I may have to upgrade for him in the hopefully not near future, but probably in the next year or two. Um, depending, you know, but he's doing really, actually really well in there, and he's not, he's not, doesn't have anyone to kill, so he's a mother, let me tell you. Hey, beautiful fish, though. I mean, he's gorgeous looking. Check out how good looking he is, but what an asshole. Then as we move up above the fish tank, what, what better things to put above a fish tank like that, and I actually did seal the back of that fish tank so I don't have any evaporation going on, you know, evaporation, fish tanks and collectibles can kind of be a tricky proposition, as many of you may know, um, the last thing you want is like salt creep or any kind of, you know, any kind of evaporation occurring on your collectibles, because that's, that's bad news, and these are two transformers from my childhood, so these guys are old, but I thought they were perfect to fit above this asshole's fish tank, and that of course is the headmaster skull cruncher and then of course I've got the leader of the Terracons Hungar there so looking really really cool nice now behind that is a nice 1995 Empire Strikes Back poster and now we're moving into the uh, crux of my transformer collection Alrighty, and here is the cream of the crop of my Transformers collection, all displayed in all its absolute glory. If this this might feel a little redundant to some of my uh, my regular viewers, I apologize for that. But but I just want to show it off one more time because I am very very proud of how this turned out. I think it looks absolutely awesome. Here is on this very first shelf are two of my top 10 uh, favorite Transformers of all time. In fact, I actually did a full top 10 video just a few transmissions ago. So if you want to see my full top 10 uh, Transformers, very favorite Transformers of all time, you can go back and check that one out if you're so inclined. In fact, I'll leave a link to it at the very end of this video so it'll be very easy for you to find. But nevertheless, these are two of my favorites. That's Hot Rod and Grimlock with their uh, Hard Hero bus behind them. Uh, looking really nice. I've got, like I said, I've got some Ikea lighting in here. It looks really fantastic. Very pleased with how that turned out. On uh, the next shelf down here is my Titan's Return Devastator, which is really like a Masterpiece scale Devastator. Um, it just absolutely looks awesome with Masterpiece figures, um, as, as I'm sure you would agree. I absolutely, totally dig this Devastator. He looks fantastic. Very, very happy with him. And then, of course, is my Transbot Apollyon third-party Megatron uh, standing there with him, looking really, really awesome. Totally dig that. And with a um, retail, mass retail, I believe that's a Titan's Return uh, Blitzwing behind him. So again, I mean, these are these are kind of this kind of is a sort of a makeshift masterpiece shelf. These aren't especially that Blitzwing and the Devastator. They aren't technically masterpiece figures. Well, real, neither really is that third-party um, Apollyon Megatron either. But nevertheless, they look really, really awesome and totally, actually, really in scale if you ask me. So I, I dig that shelf a lot as well. And then coming down here is really the cream of the crop, getting into some of my very best Transformers I have. Of course, there is my KO Takara uh, Megatron. Did a full review of him as well um, several transmissions ago. Um, you can go back and check that one out too if you'd like. Looking really, really awesome. Uh, lighting down here is not exactly the best um, for, for recording. It looks really cool. Um, in person, but for recording it may be a little uh, a little dark, so I do apologize for that, uh, nevertheless. And there is, of course, my uh, Toys R Us exclusive masterpiece, Optimus Prime, looking awesome there with his full trailer, got Roller, got the Matrix, got his, his battle axe that he used in the uh, More Than Meets the Eye miniseries, the original uh, pilot miniseries from the Transformers. 
And if we move over the shelf, there is my official, I must say, official Takara Soundwave with, I must say again, my official Takara reissue Soundwave in cassette deck mode or in uh, cassette player mode with a with a with an official uh, reissued laser beak on top of it. So looking really cool. There's a uh, knockoff uh, masterpiece Ravage, and I believe I think that's Rumble. Um, I can't remember. I know there's there's some color discrepancies there with, with these guys, but I think that's either that might be Frenzy. I, I'm not, I can't remember. I know Rumble in the cartoon is blue, but I think in this case that might actually be. Eh, maybe that is frenzy. Not sure. Doesn't matter. There he is, looking really, really cool. Um, I, I really wanted to get those pile drivers attached to his arms, but I really, I, I couldn't quite get it to go. And maybe that is because it's a knockoff and it's a little lower quality. But nevertheless, looking really, really good. Alrighty, as we move down the shelf, you will see my knockoff masterpiece scale Preda King. I love this figure a lot, although it's really fragile. It doesn't stay. It's really hard to manipulate and pose. Um, he's really kind of cumbersome, doesn't stand well, but once, once I get him in a nice position, he looks really, really good. Um, I do dig this figure a lot. Bought it from a Asian seller, a Far Eastern seller. It was really super, super, it was like one of the most super sketchy, um, eBay, uh, transactions I ever had. Took me, took several weeks to get in the mail. Um, but nevertheless, he did finally come. Um, and, and I'm pretty pleased with it, honestly. It looks really, really good. Um, the colors really pop on him. I, I, again, it's a knockoff, so you kind of get what you pay for sometimes. And yeah, I definitely got what I paid for on this one. I think I only spent 100 bucks on him. Uh, and I, I know like a more official version would, would cost a lot more. So from that, from that perspective, you know, you get what you pay for. So I guess I can't complain too much about it because it does look pretty awesome. Um, I do dig him a lot. And of course, down here are my original G1 Insecticons hanging out. And as we move down the shelf, you will see three Walmart exclusives. Um, the Masterpiece Hasbro, Starscream, Skywarp, and Thundercracker. Those three Decepticon Seekers looking pretty damn awesome right there. Dig those figures a lot. And as we move down the shelf, we've got none other than Titans Return Fortress Maximus. Really dig Fortress Maximus. This was a figure, and I think I've said this in another video where I showed him off uh, several transmissions ago. This was a figure I just had to get. And the reason I had to get him was when I was a kid in about 1987, I was in the sixth grade. My birthday was in October, and I really, really wanted to get Fortress Maximus for my birthday. Now, as you remember, Fortress Maximus at the time... The original G1 Fortress Maximus I'm talking about was the biggest Transformer to ever come out to date. And it was probably retailed for almost $100 in, in 1987 currency. That was kind of a lot of money. And I, in all fairness to my parents, you know, I was turning, I was turning 12 and, you know, they kind of they kind of kind of had a, a sit me down with me and kind of had a you know let's let's come to Jesus moment uh, knick knack a uh, little knick knack and you know what you're getting too old for this kind of stuff if you were a few years younger we wouldn't blink we'd get you this giant transformer um, no problem but you know we just feel like you're getting to an age where you're not going to really want to play with transformers and you're not going to really want to play with toys too much longer and you know like any good kid you know hey, I was a good kid. I agreed with my parents on that, and, and you know, we, we agreed that that probably wasn't going to be the best birthday present for me, and so, you know, we I, I got some, I think I got a Walkman and some other stuff that was completely unmemorable, and I passed on that, that Fortress Maximus. If I had pressed the issue, my parents probably would have gotten it for me. Um, I had great parents, but I didn't press the issue, so I didn't get it, and I always kind of regretted that. So when this guy came out as part of the Titans Return line, I still just grabbed it up and you know paid 150 bucks for him no problem because he looks absolutely awesome really dig him um he makes all kinds of cool sound effects and whatnot uh just he's really really cool my, my son can transform him like like in a blink of an eye and I, I i don't even think i can do it um but yeah he looks really really cool and then of course he's flanked by my g1 original uh, galvatron uh, scourge and there is cyclonus hiding back there as well so that's a nice shell. Alrighty, so moving up this shelf bank a little bit, here is, I've shown him these guys a number of times uh, throughout my videos, but here they are once again. Here is my Toys R Us exclusive Rodimus Prime with his uh, G1 uh, um, 
equivalent in, in, in truck mode down here. I've got a third party uh, bootleg uh, Quintesson I got off eBay for like 10 bucks. I love that figure a lot. Um, it's very cool. It's got all the, all the five faces of darkness on it. Looks really, really good. And then, of course, I've got my uh, my third-party Tyrant figure, a.k.a. Galvatron there. I dig that figure a lot, too. That's another uh, Asian order that, that actually went re really, really well off eBay. I dig him a lot. Um, the only exception is I had to put that Decepticon sticker on myself. But still, really, really awesome. So much posability in that figure. Amazing. And then, of course, coming up here is just some more G1 Transformers. This is sort of the uh, inclusionary of the third season of the Transformers. is my Voltron shelf. And I, I've teased this in a few other videos, but boy, I just got it looking so super duper. I absolutely dig it. Um, right there is, my, of course, my Playmates uh, 84 Voltron that I reviewed uh, several transmissions ago. Um, one of my most successful transmissions to date as far as views go. That thing's almost got 1,600 views. I'm very proud of that. I know for money, most YouTube channels, that's nothing. But for for us on the little plastic planet here, that's that's our superstar. I love that vid a lot, and, and I love this figure a lot. Um, so that's fantastic. Then, of course, over there is my Taiwanese uh, bootleg Matchbox Voltron. Um, below it with are my uh, Panache Place Voltron Force there, my vintage ones from my childhood, in addition to this, uh, this bootleg um, Dreger. Is that how you say that? I can't remember. But anyway, it's the, it's it's Voltron one, the the uh, vehicle Voltron. I got I got that at a Gordman's. Um, I think it's a bootleg, but it looks fantastic. Got it at a Gordman's several months back, only for like eight bucks too. Really, really dig that figure. And then of course I showed these guys off in my last video, and I've got room for them now. Are my Voltron villains from Panache Place? And I showed these off in my last video pretty exclusively, and I didn't have some information for you, so we're gonna do a little bit of a of an addition on that right now. Now I didn't know the names of of this guy right here and this guy, and I went on and this is what I do for you guys. I did extensive research on this subject just to figure out what these figures were because you know I strive for accuracy and completeness here on the plastic planet. And so this guy right here is Skull Scavenger. And then followed up over here, the red one, and I and I said these were shock troopers in my last video, some kind of shock troopers. This is actually the Doom Commander right here, this this red guy. And then, and then of course, this is a this is a this is a Robies Mutiler is what he's called. And then, then the regular Robies over here in the blue. Now I just love these colors. I mean, action figures. That's one thing action figures in general have just lost. It's just the way, just the color, the way these pop on a black shelf. Just absolutely awesome. This is really, like I said, this is really one of my very, very, very favorite shelves. And then of course I've got my uh, diecast metal legendary Defender Voltron back there. By the way, I saw him. Now I know that this is anecdotal. Anecdotal. Anecdotal? Is that the right word? Anecdotal? But anyway, I saw him, uh, this set, this complete set of these die casts marked down on my Target for 35 bucks. Now, I know discounts vary throughout the country and throughout tar from, from Target to Target, or for any retailer for that matter. But anyway, you know, if you're interested in that, in that die cast Voltron, which he is actually very, very cool, um, right now might be the time to strike. Just strike like a, like a Voltron lion on a row beast unsuspectingly. Marrr. So yeah, totally. Love this shelf, dig it a lot. It came out so good. All right, not gonna spend too much time on this section of the room, but I've just got some uh, just some miscellaneous items back in the corner over there. Um, showed that off a little bit in my last video. Uh, I really do dig that that reproduction, that Mego dark side though. He's really, really cool. And um, and then of course, I've got my life-size Yoda that I showed off at in in, uh, in detail in my last video. So, so that, that's kind of cool. I do have these guys set up, my Green Lantern and my Batman. I got Sun Glare coming in here now. Obviously, it's morning, and, uh, and I, I'm back at this. But I've got these guys set up, and I can not, for the life of me, I cannot find the Superman and the Aquaman in this set. That's the only reason I've actually been going toy hunting lately, is to find those two figures. And I have failed to do so, because that would look great with those guys. So that has not quite happened yet, but, you know, I'm working on it. Some One of these days I'll find them. And then, of course, down here, have, have you guys ever seen these, uh, these larger, this is a 1990. 99 price point um, Batmobile comes with the diecast Batman really really cool I got picked this up several months ago I've got it in actually in a little case down there looks really really awesome I dig that one a lot uh, nice piece for that that 89 Batman very very cool 
Got some more miscellaneous items on this shelf here. Got some of my DC love there. I love that those DC icon figures are really awesome. The dark side is really, really cool. And I could kind of pose them up with my Superman there. Looking cool there. And got Dark Side's daughter there. I forget her name because I'm, I'm just a, I'm a bad fan. What can I say? I forget her name. Uh, but with my Batman, that's just really cool. Of course, got my Denver Bronco helmet. And then Kit and Shockwave. Some more Denver Bronco stuff. Uh, Batman versus Superman poster I dug out. Then my Star Trek stuff's up here, looking really cool, digging that. Got my Art Asylum Enterprises, and then of course more Art Asylum, and, and then some vintage uh, um, uh, Next Generation figures, looking really cool. Uh, my, my Enterprise D Art Asylum. I gotta say though, in, in setting these guys back up, all, these, all this Art Asylum stuff, these are kind of junky figures. I mean, they were really not cheap figures. I mean, they were on, you know, they were on, you know, probably, you know, equatable to like a, a NECA or, or something of that of that nature as far as price point they're just kind of junky they especially some of these just don't even pose up well now this one's great because it's more of a statue but like the biggest piece of shit I own is this Kirk figure he doesn't even stand on his stands he's got pegs there and he doesn't even stand on them I mean it's 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 frustrating so he just kind of leans up there it's frustrating because it's a cool figure but ah, it's a piece of shit I've got a nice lunchbox back there, a nice uh, retro-esque uh, lunchbox with the original crew, looking cool. There's my Spock, and there's a uh, there's a Kirk and Spock there, of course from uh, from Mirror, the famous episode Mirror Mirror. Got another Art Asylum Enterprise with some VHS tapes. And then of course there's a there's a Kirk figure from uh, the second pilot of the original series, which was where No Man Has Gone Before which is the set is right there actually. So when they had this just slightly different uniforms, then of course there's a, Tol a Tolosian back there. Um, he's from the episode of The Cage, the first pilot. Little Star Trek history for you. Got a Gorn there from Playmates. Got this guy, I forget his name. He's the Havsy guy, you know, the half white, half black, that, that one episode that makes, you know, some really uh, positive, um, you know, social um, commentary about race, I think. But I can't remember his name, but there he is. Of course, got an old Hamilton collection plate back there. Got Kirk right there and Spock from a muck time. Great episode when, when Spock has to go back to Vulcan because he's experiencing the Pung Far, which comes every seven years. And, and that's a great episode, especially when he, especially when he throws, his, throws his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his dinner plate at Nurse Chapel and says, Woman, get out of my cabin. That's great. Just, that's a great episode. Then, of course, I've got Kirk and Spock from the Space Seed. And then this model kit I made of the of the USS Defiant. Um, that's a that's a that's a that's a I, I dig that model, although you know it falls apart all the time. But that's a that's a cool uh, from a cool episode. Those Mega Block Star Trek. I actually had the whole Mega Blocks bridge. I still need to build. I don't have a place for it, but I have the whole Mega Blocks bridge. But anyway, that's that's a that's a nice little Mega Blocks set there. And then, of course, down here is the Abrams Enterprise, which kind of hides in there because I'm not a fan. Uh, the Enterprise from uh, Enterprise with uh, Jonathan Archer uh, is down here as well. And then there's a Playmates Bird of Prey. So that, that, that wraps up my Star Trek shelf, just to show you guys it in kind of detail. Really dig it. Um, yeah. All right, and here is my die-cast metal, Ertl General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. I will always have a soft spot for a 69 Charger just because of that damn show. And as ridiculous and, and stupid as that show was, it really did have a heart of gold at, at its core. And I, I do dig this car a lot, just, just out of pure nostalgia. I mean, I, I, would, I would love to have a 69 Charger. It would be one of my dream cars. So there's just, it's just pure nostalgia love there. I can actually remember uh, my dad washing his Pontiac Grand Dam in the driveway of our, of our house. And I was six years old and trying to convince him he should paint a, a, a number one on the door and a confederate flag on the roof so <laughs> but anyway yeah I, I love that show even to this day I, I i do dig it it's just it's just it's just good wholesome fun then of course more 80s funness over here with my pac-man pops i said in the last video i don't collect hardly any pops but i had to get these guys because you know it's just so for some for some uh for some ips pops just are just awesome and particularly for video game ones uh pac-man is, is is a is a chief candidate for that really do dig those a lot down here's my robocop shelf got my ed209 from neca as well as my robocop from neca um got a play arts kai figure back there robocop it's kind of dark in there i think i said that name right and then of course there is an older um marvel uh conan the barbarian from i can't remember the, the play biz i think was the was the company that had the marvel license before uh, hasbro did 
think if I'm, if I'm not saying that right, you know, please feel free to correct me in the comment section. But I do have that Conan there, and of course he's on. He's actually on a McFarland base that I glued him on. So I, I just think he looks pretty awesome there. So that's gonna wrap up this shelf. All right, over here, not a hell of a lot to see, and it's pretty dark, but just some miscellaneous uh, Star Wars stuff up in here. I've um, got some Last Jedi and Force Awakens stuff I've kind of uh, hidden back in there, and uh, some some other items as well. Um, and then, of course, here is my main 65-gallon fish tank. And if you cannot see, if you look at my tinfoil barb there, you can see where, if I can get in the light, where his scales have just been just knocked to shit. I mean, how horrible would that be, going back to that... That South American cichlid I have in that 10 gallon over there. that be if you were stuck in like a little confined space all your life and there was just one asshole that kept running up and punching you in the face every single day just at random how horrible would that be so yeah I mean I don't mean to anthropomorphize my fish or anything but Jesus that would suck got a little Spongebob action up here looking cool all right, and then we move over in here. I got some more, uh, just my modern Star Wars shelves. Um, got some tie, got a Tie Fighter, a Tie Bomber, looking cool. There's some uh, gentle, some those mini busts from Gentle Giant, Force Unleashed, Princess Leia, looking really, really cool. I don't think Disney will ever make that version of Leia again, so I'm happy to have that, looking cool. And up here is just some more Vaders. It's kind of dark. And then there's my giant uh, Force Awakens Tie Fighter, my Black Series one. And then there's a Black Series ATSD. I just picked up this the other day, actually, at a um, at a Walmart for 15 bucks. Uh, they're on clearance right now, so if you're at a Walmart, maybe take a look. You might find one. Um, there's a few other. Uh, there's a there's a Power of the Force two um, Scout Walker up there as well, or ATSD as well as my older ATSD uh, behind a uh, Power of the Force two at at Walker. And moving down here, got a little X-wing action. That Black Series uh, Luke. I'm not. It's okay. It's it's an okay figure. Um, lights up and shit. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, so that's there. Got a battle damage Darth Vader. That's awesome. I think that's from that. I think that's from a video game tie-in from a few years back. And I got a uh, some some Gungan action down here from Episode One. Looking cool. Oh, there's my there's my there's my Captain Panaka. I couldn't find him. I didn't realize he was on a shelf. Very good. Got my uh, Kadu and my Famba, looking awesome. That was an FAO Schwartz, um, an FAO Schwartz exclusive back in the day. Paid a hundred dollars for that. Very static figure. The legs have kind of busted up on me over the years. hasn't hasn't uh, hasn't stored real well. Um, I think it kind of got hot and kind of melted. So that's kind of a disappointment. I I haven't taken very good care of it, and it, it didn't take very good care of itself. Honestly, the quality wasn't that great. But nevertheless, he's on a shelf, looking pretty good. And then, of course, oops, got some knocked over figures down here. There's my, uh, there's my Republic gunship looking very, very cool. Some Disney Elite die-cast stormtroopers that keep falling over, so they're going to go there. And moving up this shelf, got an Akale and Obi-Wan. There's a very sexy Padme Amidala from the Force Unleashed line as well. Um, there's my awesome, awesome Jedi Council scene. Showed that off a little bit in the last video. Really dig that one. That's one of my favorites. That's one of my grails of my modern three and three quarter inch collection is the Jedi Council scene right there. Looking really good. Got the skiff up here from Power of the Force 2, I think. With the uh, Power of the Force Luke Skywalker. Looking really cool. Dig that a lot. That's a good set. Got a modern Amana Man right there with a Tusken Raider. And a Ronto. And moving up there, got uh, Obi Wan Kenobi from Episode Three with a General Grievous uh, mini bust, or I should say, uh, got some Power of the Force Two Ewoks and whatnot. And I guess there's some other more modern Ewoks in there, but looking cool. Got a Dewback, of course, the Episode Two Slave One with the uh, with it's kind of getting dark, but if you can see back there, the uh, Mail Away Mace Windu's up there. Got another Force Unleashed figure, the Luke Skywalker, looking really cool. Uh, so, and some other miscellaneous items up there as well, including a Power of the Force 2, Tauntaun, and Luke. Alrighty, so here's another big improvement I, I, I did in this room uh, just recently, is I added some, some 
awesome LED lighting into my main modern three and three quarter inch display here. Basically all this is is a giant industrial shelf that I've kind of put some some bricks and some uh, some collector grade um, hobby wood in there for shelves and it looks absolutely awesome. I do dig it a lot. Um, I mean I could do a little more to maybe make it a little more fancy but it really does the job, I think, and it really shows off these figures really, really nicely, and the lighting just helps tremendously. You know, look at the just you know look at the diversity of the figures that came out. You know, prior to, and I'm not making this a Disney rag on here, but but I mean, let's just let's just face it. Prior to the buyout, I mean, just look at the diversity of the characters you got, and just the, the so many different interesting you know aliens and 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 robots, droids. You know, I mean, just the saga just felt so much richer back then. Now everything's just, you know, really kind of drab, honestly. The figures that have come out in the last few years are really, really drab. Even even Rogue One, which I thought was a really good movie, the figures are just drab. Not these. These are colorful. They're fun. I mean, say what you will about the prequels. The, the toys were awesome. Um, and... Yeah, I, there's, just, there's just nothing to complain about with these figures. Um, and this is one reason I've just totally gotten out of collecting these, really, is because, well, and, and, I, and I have to say, in all fairness, I got out well in advance of the, of the buyout, but uh, of collecting three and three quarter inch Hasbro just because they became so so expensive and I my hobby my, my hobby interest shifted from more high-end items. Like, at the time, it was Sideshow. Now it's kind of moved into Hot Toys, uh, into the Hot Toys uh, realm. But, I mean, it just started, you know, quantifying, you know, if I bought... You know, I could buy 10 of these or one sideshow. Actually, it's getting more expensive than that now. But nevertheless, that's one of the reasons I stopped buying these. But, but, I will say, I mean, just looking at the quality of these figures compared to what's coming now, I can totally see why Star Wars sales are in the dumps. And, and that's not even saying anything of the quality of the current Disney films. Just the quality of the toys and just how uninspiring they are to collectors and how unfun they are to kids. Now, granted, I mean, kids don't even play with action figures too much anymore. My kids would rather play on apps and video games all day long. They wouldn't touch an action figure if it, you know, if they, if they thought it'd come alive. Um, that's just the way they are. That's just the way a lot of kids are these days. So there is that as well. But nevertheless, I just, I really dig these figures a lot. And this takes me back to really the golden age of collecting for me. Alrighty, just a couple more stops here in the archive room, and then we'll be ready to head up into the main plastic planet. But here, of course, is my modern um, Imperial shuttle back there. And, of course, followed up with uh, this display, which I showed off last week in my video, the uh, Micro World Empire Strikes Back Hoth Collection, which is sort of a mod podge, as I said last week. Um, I'm missing a whole set there, but I've got a few figures from it, because, you know, when you're a kid, you trade things with your friends, and that's sort of what I ended up with um, through trades and whatnot. It was, was this sort of mod podge collection, so really, really cool. Um, then, of course, I've got my uh, my small uh, die-cast Metal Millennium Falcon from when I was a kid, and I, I added uh, some battle damage onto it when I was a child, looking really, really cool. <laughs> so there's some, there's, there's an early knickknack custom for you, looking cool. Then of course I've got my vintage AT, at Walker right here, almost complete, almost complete. I am missing one shin gun right there, and I, these are actually reproduction stickers. And I've been, actually been thinking about getting some reproduction chin guns as well, just to, just to complete it. Um, haven't pulled the trigger, but thinking about it, so that would be cool. Of course, I got my ad at driver hanging out right by him. Very, very cool. Then down here is the ATTE and uh, some other Clone Wars uh, stuff, including the Jendi Trukowski. Did I say his name right? Anyway, Clone Wars series. You know, remember those micro uh, micro episodes they had on Cartoon Network in between episode two and three? Very, very cool. I did dig that series a lot, as I'm sure you did as well. And of course, moving down here, I've got my Power of the Force 2 Snowspeeder, a uh, Darth Vader collector uh, case back there. Um, I bought that at a... At a at a, a hobby store or an antique store several years back. Actually, my wife got that for me, but nevertheless, not from my childhood, but still cool. And then, of course, there's the Jedi Starfighter from Episode 2 and the Obi-Wan and Anakin's Jedi Starfighters from Episode 3. And down here on the bottom shelf, hopefully there's enough lighting down here. I mean, again, this is a basement, and it is dark in places, and I like the ambiance lighting. I'm a big fan of ambiance lighting. It just doesn't necessarily make it really really good for shooting videos on YouTube. Nevertheless, I do dig ambiance lighting, and this is the world I live in. You know, I don't I don't live to record, but, you know, it does kind of suck when I do want to record things because it's a little dark. But anyway, here's my 40th anniversary figures I've collected just recently, looking really cool. Probably might open those in the near future. And then, of course, I've got uh, Luke's Homestead right there, and this is a great set outside of the shitty styrene that it comes on. Other than that, it's really cool. 
And then, of course, there's a, a modern uh, Luke Skywalker figure and a modern land speeder. Very, very cool. Oh, and one more thing. This is totally awesome and kind of makes the room, gives it some color. My wife's My Pet Monster chilling out over here. So, I mean, what 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 nostalgia room wouldn't be complete without a My Pet Monster? I mean, maybe we need some, some freaking Teddy Ruxpin action up in here as well. But My Pet Monster is pretty awesome. So, here he is chilling out in the corner. And he also hides that sewer plug. Really, really nice. That's below him. So, that's good. So... Anyway. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap up our little adventure through my archive room. I'm going to give you guys one more panoramic shot of it before we, before we exit and head up into the plastic planet. Alrighty, and here is one more little shot across the, the room there for you. Looking really, really awesome, and I am just super pleased. I mean, you know, one of the dangers of a basement, and this is a basement, and so, you know, my uh, my, my priorities towards, uh, towards you know, keeping it, you know, museum-like is very, very low. But, you know, one of the dangers, of course, is allowing it to become a catch-all, you know, where things just start junking it up, and that's exactly what happened this last time. So I'm going to really try to avoid that here in the future. Um, just try to keep this really nice. This is my workout area. I really got to get on that weight bench and start working out some more. So that's going to be happening real soon. It's uh, the other day I actually started lifting and there were cobwebs on it. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad when there's cobwebs on your exercise equipment or when you start using it as a really, really expensive clothes hanger. That's bad too. And I've caught myself doing both. So um, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be uh, rectified here very, very soon. So yeah, really happy. This is a great, great little escape room down here. Nothing better coming down here, putting up some weight, cranking some metal, cranking some Anonymarth, cranking some Iron Maiden, you know, getting getting the endorphins going. Yeah, you know, showing the world, yeah, I'm 42, but I still got old guy strength. That's awesome. I love that. So anyway, that's what this room is for, and uh, I'm going to be enjoying it, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tour of Knickknacks Plastic Planets Archive Room, new and improved. Alright, hey guys, so I am editing this video and I am currently at the 45 minute mark and I haven't even got up here into the plastic planet to show you guys off all the new and improvements up here. So it's just not going to happen in this video because it's just, it's you know what, I don't want to make this into a into a movie. Um, and if you've been with me, if you stuck with me this long, thank you very, very much. I do promise I'm going to show you guys this room in the next couple days. Not going to make you wait till next week when I usually drop one on a uh, drop a video on a Sunday. Well, I won't make you wait that long. I'll get this video up in the next, uh, the part two of this video up in the next couple days. So in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much uh, for uh, for hanging out with me in, in the Plastic Planet. And uh, hey, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. I would totally appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we have a lot of fun here on the Plastic Planet. All right, till next time, guys. You know what? Have a great week. And uh, I'll see you very, very soon, actually, just in a couple days. All right, for part two of, of this awesome room tour. All right, take it easy, guys. man how you doing buddy oh man i'm not doing shit what are you up to well slow down slow down dude i can you're so excited what, what's going on man i can barely i can barely hear you what, what 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 you just got back from the store and you got you got what you got a copy of the last jedi on blu-ray and you want me to you want me to come over now and watch it with you you're really excited about that that those deleted scenes and watching that uh, the director commentary from director Ryan Johnson. Yeah, man, dude, I would love to come over, man. Yeah, I will come over, man. I will come over right now. You know, shit, 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 shit. No, I, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. No, I, I can't. I can't come over. I, I, I promised the wife I'd do this thing and. You know, I mean, you know, 
you know, I mean, dude, if I want to get laid sometime in this century, I, I you know, I can't, I, I can't, man. You know, you know, I want to, you know, I want to so bad, right? Yeah, totally. I totally do. All right, man. All right. Well, dude, you have, you enjoy that, man. And, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll do something another time. All right. All right, buddy. All right, man. You take it easy. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Bye. <sighs> into madness and felonious in fact even traces hamlet's descent into madness from sadness through of watching and that's the sense of not sleeping and felonious lays out the symptoms of mad of madness that hamlet exhibits and he ends up